guys, it's Cece. Welcome back to my channel. Today, I thought we would do something a little different because lately we've been taking a look at all the great top 10 fantastic Nat 5s in Summoner's War. So I thought let's take a look at the 10 worst Nat 5s in Summoner's War. So for the first worst one, um, this is kind of a general one, I would say, because I feel like this is one of the families of a monster that honestly needs a buff. I think we've been waiting for it. They've been getting little buffs here or there, which has helped, but I do still feel like when these monsters came into the game, they just really needed some type of a rework, and that's gonna be the demons. And I know that they did buff the fire demon, which you guys know my opinion on the fire demon, you know, and I still feel like with his skills, is kind of still kind of eh. Like, if we're looking at the flames of hell, something that they added in, which was cool, is and something that is unique to them. I'm gonna give them that. Um, the blocks all enemies, boss excluded, from removing harmful effects for one turn. I do feel like that's really cool, but having it for the one turn is very like, like it's still kind of eh. I do feel like if it was a two turn thing, I don't know if that would make him like too OP or not, but I do feel like with the one turn when it doesn't always land and like anytime I've used it and it lands on the one and it's only one turn and it just like, I feel like two turn would really do a better job than the one turn does if they were to kind of change it or improve it. Um, also inflicts continuous damage that can't be resisted by the number proportional to the damage dealt for two turns. Kind of weird skill, right? Um, and then his second skill, it's okay, I guess, but it absorbs um, all other allies HP by 10% to attack all enemies, dealing damage that's proportionate to the absorbed HP, recovers the attack bar of all allies by 20% afterwards. Why you guys steal my allies HP though? Like why you just, just, no, just leave it alone. Just attack everybody. It's, <laughs> I feel like that would need a whole rework on this skill, but eh, I don't know. They're still just kind of eh. Um, the water one too, I feel like, he, they just don't do enough for me and I hate to say that like I know for the fire one he can kind of work in like a cleave team but I do feel like that's so specific to him that it just needs something a little more um I feel like the water one kind of lets me down a little bit too so just in general I'm gonna kind of put these guys on the list um the wind one's pretty good because it's got that unique passive and then light and dark are also great but the water and the fire a little more the next unit on my list is gonna have to be Helena and she is one that when they gave her the buff, I do feel like she became a little more usable, but at the end of the day, I feel like she's just um, like a tank for a water unit, to be honest. And she's also an HP type, but with her passive, um, increases your attack bar by 25% with each attack if you land a critical hit. So she's an HP type, but you have to have the crit on her. And um, with her second skill, so attacks all enemies, decreases their defense for two terms, absorbs the attack bar by 50% divided equally, da da da. Chance to stun on the first skill, and then her passive here. Um, so recovers HP by 10% of your max HP when you attack on your turn, reduces damage dealt by water by 50%. So I feel like she doesn't do much apart from just kind of being a support unit to take in hits from water. So I feel like if we're looking at her other units, like if we're looking at Amelia, like she's far superior, right? She's gonna give you the immunity that you do get um, every turn in her passive. And then if we are looking at the wind one, the Diana, we know her use too, right? Like she's really good, increases your attack bar by 15% when other allies are attacked. And then like increases your attack bar by 25% each line critical. So, I mean, she also has that weird kind of a soaring wings passive, but I do feel like in general, she just brings more, like attacks the enemy four times, removes a beneficial effect, inflicts continuous damage um stun for 25 percent and then like she also has that shield in there that creates but like overall see if we're like looking at these two units like over like just her use in there is just way better than the fire one so i do feel like helena is one of those units that's just she needs a buff for number three i feel like you could have guessed this right like <laughs> We saw this coming, I think, everybody, kind of. So number three on my list for worst nat five is Ariel. And that hurts me because he was my first nat five that I actually got in Summoner's War. So right now, Ariel um, used to be really good because he had the heals, right? He was a unit that's like, oh, he's got the double heals like in here, recovers an ally's HP by 50%, his third skill. Uh, so I also had like where they got that buff in there as well, where it fills up the attack bar of all allies by 20% each recovers their HP by 40%, additionally recovers 15% uh, each turn for three turns, HP, blah, blah, whatever. So yeah, he has that like continuous heal he puts on it with a third skill. But at the end of the day, 
that's all he is is a healer. If they have um, like unrecoverable on it, GG, it's not gonna work. Even if we're looking at like other superior like nat fours or nat threes, like even Chasun can heal through unrecoverable. And now Lulu, like Lulu is already better than Ariel. And now that Lulu is getting the second awakening, it's just far superior. Let, let's actually take a minute and go look at Lulu. So this isn't even like the second awakened one because obviously those skills aren't quite available yet at this time. But even like remove heal, removes two harmful effects from all allies and recovers the HP of all allies by 20%. And then look at the recovery go up once you actually skill up. Grants immunity on the allies who had no harmful effects for two turns. That's already so much better. It makes me sad. <laughs> like even with the 2A, I feel like Ariel's just gonna be completely replaced. And I'm gonna put it out there right now, next buff, Ariel's for sure gonna be in there. He's gonna have a buff coming. I'm sure he's gonna have something that is gonna like remove harmful effects to heal first, but he's definitely the third worst nat five on this list. Number four is gonna go to Teor. And the reason that he's on here is I feel like he just lost his use in the game. If we're looking at, for example, he kind of used to be used in Dragon's B12 and then Spectre had the second awakening and having that second awaken unit be better than a Teor and like, it's just a little sad. I feel like he could have a little bit of an improvement and a buff. And I actually do use him right now, but it's in like a specific team comp and I do wish he did a little more. So if we're looking at Teor, like first skill, continuous damage. The second skill, um, attack speed is increased for two turns. If you get a critical hit, you're gonna build it as an attack type, damage type. And then the third skill. So this is the thing. So attacks the enemy, freezes the target for one turn. Afterwards attacks all other enemies dealing half the damage of the initial attack, decreasing their attack speed for three turns, reducing their attack bar by 50%. I feel like one buff that they could do, that even just improve that, would just be like freeze everybody. Have it like you attack an enemy, but it has a chance to freeze everybody else as well. If we're comparing him to something like the wind, that attacks all enemies. Um, the fire one has his own thing kind of going on where he'll have the collapse on him, right? But I do feel like if they were to improve Teor and give him a little more, just make that third skill an AoE so at least if you were going to use him in Dragon's B12, he could clear the waves a little faster and just have a little more use to him. I feel like right now he's just a little lackluster. The fifth one, I'm actually going to say the Wind Ifrit. And the reason I'm saying that is we know his fire one has a use. He has that unique passive. We already know Theo, he's violent happy. Typically he'll go off. You have that passive with the elemental advantage, which is awesome. And then we have wind. And same thing, he got a little bit of a buff at some point, but I'm gonna throw that question to you guys. How, do you guys really use him? Because before the twins came out, I feel like he was kind of used in secret dungeons. That was a use that he had because of the third skill where it attacks all enemies and the damage increases by 30% for each harmful effect on the enemy. Uh, damage increases, da da da. But then he also had the second skill, which was attacks all enemies and stuns them. Uh, and then the first skill kind of just has the continuous damage in there. But, like, think about it. Do, is there anywhere that we can really, really use him? Like, looking at his third skill, yeah, he has the AoE on there. The damage increases, but that's all it is. It's just an AoE damage dealing skill in the third one. And then here, um, attacks all enemies, damage is proportionate to my max HP. So also a weird thing, like the damage is proportionate to max HP, but he's an attack type. But then the first skill, the damage increases according to your max speed. So if you're gonna root him, you're gonna want it speed on him so he can do more here. You're gonna wanna have HP on him with the second skill, but then he's an attack type. So I just feel like he's one of those units that's a little confusing and just doesn't really have a use in the game. For number six, you knew she was gonna be on this list, right? <laughs> You suspected it, I'm sure. I would love to know who has summoned a Christina and actually been excited about it and been like, she's a unit I wanted, yes. Like, I can't even say it without laughing because I've summoned her for people and had them been disappointed. Anytime I've had her in a blessing, I've had people say, not Christina. I've had her with a dupe and somebody picked the dupe. I've had people pick her, her be new and be fed. So she's gotta be on this list, right? She 100% needs a rework. Let's take a quick look at our skills and we can, we can see why, right? So first skill, attacks the enemy three times, cool. Uh, each attack, 30% chance to decrease the attack bar by 30%, that's not bad. For second skill, attacks the enemy five times, each attack has a 50% chance to remove a beneficial effect and inflict continuous damage. She's a nat five, her second skill hits five times. Let's go over to Abigail. She's a nat four and she attacks eight times, okay? I'll throw that out there. Um, and then her passive, Increases the damage to be dealt to an enemy on the next turn by 15% each time an ally is attacked. The effect stacks, da da da. Um, and then she has her rolling cannon, which was at some point kind of added in. Attacks all enemies with a cannon gun. The damage increases 
in proportion to the number of allies alive. So, that's it? Like, okay, attacks all enemies, but like, she just doesn't do anything. She doesn't do enough. Um, like, even the fire one. Like, you have that chance to decrease the defense, inflicts, like, let's just look at the fire one, the one that people don't even really use that much. Attacks the enemy with a cannon gun, weakens the defense for one turn, 90% chance. You're probably gonna get that defense break, right? Afterwards, inflicts damage on all enemies and destroys their max HP by 50% of the inflicted damage. I feel like that skill alone is better than, like, this skill, right? So, <laughs> she's just not a good nap five. I think she has more work to be done for her. I think she's a unit that they need to kind of revisit the skills because in my opinion, when the nat four versions are better than the nat five, then it's just a little disappointing. For number seven, we are in the light category and I took a look at the LD nat fives here and overall the light, they're pretty good. They are kind of unique, not so bad, but I am going to put Seraph on this list and this is kind of speaking from personal experience. I have him on my EU account and normally if you have an LD Nat 5, you would think that's somebody that you're going to want to bring into battle. You'll have comps around, um, like you'll be excited to use and he's just a unit that is a little lackluster. So with Seraph, um, first skill, attacks an enemy. His second skill is going to heal all allies by 15% of their HP and removes two harmful effects from each ally, which is kind of cool um light attributes receive double the amount of healing so okay it's a heal uh third skill redistributes the hp of all enemies excluding bosses sacrifices half of your current hp to deal damage proportionate to the sacrificed hp to all enemies so it's really the third skill that kind of makes me question it because he yeah he has the heal and the um like removing harmful effects but we have so many other units in the game that can do that that it really doesn't make him unique here and then looking at the third skill, in order to actually do damage, because it's based on the sacrificed HP, you need to have amazing runes on him and super high HP to actually be able to do damage. So for that reason, I feel like he's just not unique enough with that second skill. And then for the third skill, like it's so reliant on you having amazing runes with high HP to actually do any damage that he's just a lackluster nat five. With number eight, we're gonna be looking at Trinity. And the reason I'm putting Trinity in here is, I mean, if you have, and I know people that have her and have kind of confirmed what I'm saying with it, and I've tried her out, and again, I feel like for an LD Nat 5, it just doesn't do enough. Like, if you're looking at the first skill, like, this is not unique in any way, shape, or form, right? Um, very similar to Katarina in that sense. Like, your first skill, attacks with the sword, automatically activated. If the enemy dies, you're gonna do Soul Reaper. Soul Reaper attacks an enemy, recovers HP by 30% of the inflicted damage, becomes invincible for one turn when the enemy is killed. All right, so you're gonna have to kill them. <laughs> kill them to become invincible, but you're gonna be an HP type. And then you have your third skill, and this is the one that's the reason that that's on my list, really. So Ragnarok. The final battle begins. Both allies and enemies lose 15% of their HP. The enemies receive massive additional damage. Meh. Like, it's just... Why? I, it... As a skill, like, for an LD Nat 5, I feel like if this is one that I personally summon, I'd be like, ah... Uh... Cool, transmog looks awesome on my profile, but... Finding an actual use is going to be kind of tricky. The places I've really seen Trinity used is like PvP and in Arena, but you really need a team that you can kind of set up so Trinity can go and do damage. But like rune-wise, it's going to be a little bit weird. And then like you're really going to have to try to figure out when you actually want to use the skill. Do you want to lose some HP? How much damage are you really going to use? So it's going to affect how you actually rune her. And like her kit overall is just a little weird. And one of the reasons that she's on here. Number nine on my list is gonna go to the Dark Sky Dancer. And I do have her on here for a number of reasons. So number one, they have her as an attack type, right? But then she's got the Amuse. And the Amuse, so remind you guys, recovers the HP of all allies by 20% of your max HP. So she's an attack type, but if you're gonna wanna use her as a healer, she's gonna have to have higher HP, right? Kind of confusing. And then her third skill attacks with the secretly hidden blade to inflict damage that ignores all beneficial effects that reduce the inflicted damage. The damage increases as your HP status decreases. So you're gonna do more damage as your HP goes down. Then you're gonna want HPs that you can heal, but then you're an attack type, but it's okay because she's got leader skill, right? 
but her leader skill increases the attack speed of all allies monsters in the arena by 28%. I just feel like for an LD Nat 5, we have ones that are, like look at Sam for example, he's got a 33% arena lead, so I feel like she could have at least had that. <laughs> Like from 28 to 30, at least give her the arena lead with speed so she'd have a use there. But because of how kind of confusing her kit is, um, I feel like she just doesn't really have a use in certain comps, right? She's an attack type, but then she's got the heal in there, but then she has the one with the damage, which this is fine, but then the amuse doesn't really make sense in there. Like even the water one. So even this one would make more sense, I feel like, than the current skill that she has if we were to compare like between the sky dancers. So for that reason and kind of her skills and how they work together and just her the lack of speed, at least give her the speed lead if anything. But because of all that, she's definitely number nine for worst at fives. Number 10 on my list is gonna go to Vero. And I actually made a video talking about um, units that we used to love in the game and then we kind of forgot about. So if you guys have not checked that out, then be sure to check out that video. And some of you commented that Vero was a unit that you used to use and love and then stopped. So I thought I'd take a minute, look at him, and I realized that yes, he has to be on this list for one of those worst nat fives, just because of how he's fallen off and looking at kind of his skills and his passive. So Pharaoh is an attack type, and first skill, the damage increases according to speed, which it works. Uh, second skill, it's an AoE, um, which stuns them, and then the damage proportion to max HP, that also works. But I feel like where Vero fell off is really the passive. So. For the passive, removes a harmful effect except in ability effects on all allies each turn and the allies will recover their HP by 3% for each harmful effect removed. So he actually got a nerf some time ago, this used to be a little bit different. I guess they thought he was too OP so they nerfed him so people stopped using him, then they tried to buff it a little bit and I feel like at that point it was just too late and like looking at the passive I still don't really feel like it does enough. So. Like analyzing the skill, so it's gonna remove a harmful effect on all allies each turn, and then the heal is 3%. So alone, I feel like the 3% is really low. Like why why 3%, why not 5%? Uh, let's put this into a scenario. If you're using Vero, if you were to use him in um, like a guild war, you're gonna have three, like you and your two allies, right? So if you remove a harmful effect on all allies uh, by 3%, that's a 6% heal max right if like you're not including yourself it's a passive you are including yourself uh nine percent that's not much right uh if you're using an, even a team of five i still feel like that three percent is pretty low and that's only if it actually removes a harmful effect so i feel like a way that they can improve this is instead of removes a harmful effect like um kind of ran randomize it a little bit right like removes up to three harmful effects for example uh, maybe it'll be one, maybe two, maybe three, or just change it in a way that makes the heal a little more worth it, because that heal alone with the 3% is really not enough. We have so many other units that can bring even a continuous heal to us that even that three times, like your three allies or your five allies, is really just not enough to make him a viable nat 5 unit. That's it for today's video. I hope you guys enjoyed the top 10 worst nat fives in Summoner's War. If you have some monsters that you think should be on this list, comment those down below and you guys know what to do. Hit that thumbs up, hit that subscribe button as I do post daily and you don't want to miss out. And that's it for today. So bye for now. Next level.